Proverbs of the Prince of Psalm 117. We will begin in just a moment. So I heard a story um, from a pastor that I know in, out of, out of uh, Georgia about a student at a Bible college. And it was, on this particular day, he was going to be the one to preach the chapel. And somewhere off in the distance, you know, he was waiting for his time. The student walks up to the pulpit and he says, I can't think of one reason to praise the Lord. With that, he goes back and he just sits down. Of course, it was just quiet. And if I was quiet for like 10 seconds, you would probably wonder what is wrong with me. On well, the front row of that, of, that, of that row was the president of that of, of the Bible college. And he was wondering what you do, just looking around. And then the student gets up and he walks back over and says, Aren't you glad that's not true? Aren't you grateful that we have a reason to praise the Lord? Aren't you grateful that we have the honor? We get to lift up and praise the name of Jesus Christ. And from that very moment, everyone will remember the reason why they have a reason to praise the Lord. So join me as we pray real quickly. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day you've given us. Thank you for the reasons that we have to praise you. Thank you, Lord, for um, the beautiful gifts that you've given us. Thank you for the good and the bad, Lord. We pray for this time that we will lift you up. Amen. So this week, we continue this series on prayer, but we're looking at praise. And this week, we're going to look at the why and the how to praise God. Some may understand that understand why we pray, because it's a, a form of communication to the Father. In the prayer aspect of praise is what we give glory to the Father for the good and the bad. Uh, the text we have that comes from God's word is from Psalmist, from Psalmist David. And it's about how faithful our Lord is and how it never ends. Um, Psalm 117 reads, Praise the Lord, all nations. Exalt him, all people. For great is his steadfast love towards us, and his faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. 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 This is a sacred microphone. All right. We have a reason to praise the Lord. We all have very different reasons. And for someone who's saying, no, I don't, just think about this. Did you wake up this morning? Did you have food on your table? Was it burnt? <laughs> my wife not burn up my breakfast. I'm just saying. It was delicious. She's behind you. <laughs> the reason to praise the Lord with the way that 2020 and 2021 has gone has been crazy, especially in our household. But we have something to look back on. With any meaning of scripture. There's something behind that. And with this being the shortest book, or the shortest chapter in the entire Bible, um, we know that in Psalms, in the beginning, is that we have uh, God blessing man, but when we get towards the end, we have man who's blessing God. And in many times, we, we hear those who love poetry, and I'm one of those type of guys who love poetry, but that's exactly what Psalms is. And Hasselbook said this, to read the Psalms is to join the voices of numberless people who have read and prayed them, have felt their joy and anguish and their indignation. So there are moments when we praise the Lord that shall leave us speechless. So we're gonna look at first of that verse of, of Psalm 117, verse one is the who to praise. The Psalmist opens up here, praise the Lord. And most of the book of Psalms was written by David. And throughout his entire time, we know that David had ups and he had downs. And when he was down, he definitely still praised the Lord. When we have, we have a reason to praise, okay? Each of us has a reason. Again, we woke up, we have a roof over our head, we have food to eat. And with all that, we should continue that praise. The Lord has done so much for us. Again, but what about those people who don't have that much? 
this is true, but the last time you went to a shelter, they were thankful for the food they got. They were thankful for the shelter they had as well. We normally thank God during grace and at that time, but you know, we should also thank the Lord, praise the Lord throughout all times of the day. And for those who are working still, praise the Lord, we still have a job. Constantly, you know, I was saying, this could have been a whole lot worse, but we have a home still. We, we have not been without. Because there are so many of us that either have that kind of job where we are essential or essential for a different reason. And so we have the how. So the word says we should extol him. What that means is that we should praise him with enthusiasm, with eager enjoyment and, and family. Let me say this, we should show the Lord that same praise, whether it's playing football, babysitting, car accident, I don't care. Praise the Lord, one, car accident, you're, you're still alive. Uh, a couple of weekends ago, our family did a, a weekend trip to uh, St. Louis where we saw the Cardinals play, Cardinals lost, but you know what, that's another story. <laughs> But here's something that I noticed while uh, we were sitting, and I actually looked up the numbers. There were 45,239 fans in that stadium that night. For five straight minutes, the wave went around the stadium because they were praising the team, hoping the team would win. And the team lost, but still, imagine if we put that same praise that they put into praising their team to win that game. If you look for me at Psalms 150, and we're going to, we're going to look at 150 some, some, some more, but if you look at Psalms 150 in verse 2, it says that we should praise the Lord for his mighty deeds, praise him according for his excellent goodness. His deeds is what he has done and what he will do. And let me tell you this, I cannot be silent on how great our God is and that he is who he is. You know, we just finished praise the Lord, Lord and worship. We sing to the Lord on the throne and that will not, and that cannot be removed. If you wonder why, why some people say, why do you sing and why, or why do you cry during worship? Here's something I, I heard from the song. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. We, have, we don't have a reason to hold back our praise. And when the band's up here, they're not playing for our enjoyment, but they're actually playing for the audience of one. We don't say, I like that song, not that one. I like that tune, but not that one. Chris is on me. Maybe not. No, it's Chris. <laughs> <laughs> but in Psalm 150, verses 3 through 5, it says, Praise him with, with trumpet sounds. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourines and dance. Praise him with string and pipe. pipe. Praise him with the sound of cymbals. Praise him with loud, clashing cymbals. That, that basically means church. If you can sing, sing. If you can't sing, still sing. If you have a kazoo, blow that kazoo. Praise the Lord with what you have. Now we're going to look into the who. And, and this is going to be in verses in verse uh, 2. It's, still going to be, it's like verse 1, verse 2. But it says, who to praise him? And it says, all nations all people, because this is not an exclusive club. All means all, and you're gonna get tired of me saying this, because it's in the Hebrew, there's no translation for it. All means all. And notice that all is mentioned twice, because it's everything, everyone. Uh, Philippians 2, 9 through 11 says, therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every name, so that every so sorry, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven, in earth, and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So let's go back to that word exalt. Paul in the book of Philippians is talking is also talking about the humility of, of Christ, but however, we can't skip over 10 and 11 because it says it twice. Every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. All nations, all people praise 
the Lord. And we should be doing, we should be doing that from the rooftop. Verse 2 of Psalm 117 from our main text, it says that we should be praising the Lord. We get praise for when our kids do good in school. Um, we get praises when we find errors at work. But how often do we get praise for God for helping us or helping the kids do that? Um, throughout the Bible, you know, we see good and bad praises. And even in the book of Exodus, as the people are waiting for Moses to take them across the Red Sea, the people are praising God for, for getting them out of that situation. But what happened after? They started worshiping the created instead of the creator. And when we begin um, doing that, we begin a slippery slope. And as we read the scriptures, we should remember why we praise the Lord. And then we start seeing the why we praise the Lord. And this is coming, um, we're still in verse 2. But because of his love and his faithfulness. The psalmist here reminds us of two reasons. First, it's because of the, the love of God. And again, it's also because of his faithfulness. Because we can't really compare that to anything else. The word love is often thrown around a lot. And at least the majority of the times we read, it has the same meaning. You know, I love my wife, I love my child. But at the end of the day, it's the Father, and then my family. Romans 5, 7 says, But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That is some type of amazing love that Christ still died for us while we were still sinners. God's love for us in that text is to be, it was an intense feeling of deep affection. This kind of love is not what we see today unless is a parent protecting their, protecting their child from deep hurt or trying to search for their child that they're lost. In our worship, when was the last time you had that kind of love? When was the last time you felt that kind of love for your fellow neighbor? In other words, may I share the pain that you have to allow you to get through the storm? May I be with you? Sorry, may I be with you? you as the super father. And when we do that, we should let that love show it. The Lord's faithfulness is that he is with us to forgive sin. But we should understand that there is serious blasphemy against the Lord that is an unforgivable sin. So basically what I'm trying to say is if we are not serious, if we were to Blaspheme the Lord. Where is the love in that? The Lord is faithful for us today. He redeemed us. He plucked us up out of death. He set us back on the ground. And here's what it means to be faithful from our Bible for you. It said, um, the parable of the talents is that the master tells the servant who is faithful that they will, will be given more than they started out with. When we are faithful, where the Lord leads us, we will go. Matt Raymond said, never once did we ever walk alone. Never once did you leave us on our own. You are faithful, God. You are faithful. Then he goes on to say that every step we breathe in your grace, evermore we will be breathing out your praise. And so while we are Faithful to God, please be faithful to others in our daily relationships, in our marriages, and, and, and again, to our Lord, by trusting in all things that he does. There's a hymn that was written that's become a favorite in the last 10 years, but it's almost 100 years old. Uh, Thomas Chisholm, it was said that this was, the, was a poem about God's faithfulness. And it's based off of Lamentations 3, 22 through 23, and it says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy comes to an end. They are new every morning. Great your faithfulness. And that song is, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, the mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto thee. So again, 
Psalm 117, we have the hymn to praise. Our first point said for we, we, we praise God for the many reasons over and over again. The psalm is commanding that we praise the Lord for what he has done. Praise him for good, for family, for our health, for his son on the cross, even for the bad. And yes, because one of the bad builds the character to get us where we are today for those dark days. Compared because our dark days don't compare to those brighter days, in my opinion. We should not hide our praise. If you hear my daughter back there, who's telling her, so my, her wife, I like to put her down. Um, a couple of Sundays ago, we were sitting on the back row, and there was a, a woman you know, praising the Lord with her hands up, and this is what Molly's doing. I, I, I said, okay, well, she's praising the Lord. And that's, and that's something I want to say that it's amazing how a one year old. Who may not understand what's going on is worshiping in her own way. It makes me wonder could we have that childlike faith where we can praise the Lord without any embarrassment? Because, you know, as we grow older, we don't like to dance in front of people because, you know, some of us can't dance at all. I got two left feet and my wife knows that. And then we look at the who will praise them. We read that, you know, we are to exalt the Lord. And look, Praise him in the car. Turn that radio up. I know there's some noise ordinances, but hey, you can let the windows up. No one knows what you're singing. They're not going to see you the next light. But just praise the word of whatever you're doing. Again, we should praise the Lord in our offices, in our homes, on the ball field. Our praise should be higher than what's in these four walls of this building. We are, we are supposed to have a joy that is unshakable, undeniable. And we should think of this, that our praise should be a light that doesn't go out. My hope is that when, I, when the good Lord calls me home, no one is mourning, but it's more of a praise. Let the praise show more than a morning. Earlier, I said that our praise to our Lord is not exclusive, and that is true. And again, I talked about my one-year-old, but praise him until whenever the Lord comes. The word did not say that you have to be an American to praise the Lord. It didn't say you have to be Canadian. It said all nations will praise the Lord. You have seen the people in the underground churches who are being persecuted for their own faith. But when they get a copy of the Lord's word, do you not see how much praise they have in their, in their souls about that? It's a beautiful thing to see. So the next time you feel the presence of the Lord, stop and just give him that praise. All people will praise the Lord. But those that David did say again, exalt him. Give him the highest praise. Again, it's not being exclusive. There's no gender and there's no race involved. And that word all means all. But I do have an announcement for you for the week. When you get when you get to be with the Lord in your prayer, when we get to be, we'll be with the Lord, excuse me. And that's why I'm talking about the Lord in heaven. Um, we're not going to be hunting. We're not going to be fishing. We're not going to be for spouses. Ultimately, we're going to be around the throne praising the Lord. We will, uh, we won't have time to worry about anything other than who's on the throne. I look forward to hearing those words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. I look forward to worshiping the Lord. And then finally, in family, Here's what we get look, look forward to seeing while praising the Lord. There'll be one language. And then why? I want to let you know why I why we should praise the Lord. Because of what he has done and what he's going to do. Uh, for our family in the last uh, almost year, and I'm almost finished, uh, my wife's mom had a heart attack and COVID at the same time. Came to move with us in January, and that was on my, I think my third semester of seminary, maybe second. We had a big snowstorm. My dad was in the hospital for reasons unknown. A month later, he was back in the hospital, unknown, until we found out he had almost died within two days of having a, uh, an ulcer. I have a reason to praise the Lord. One of my mother-in-law is still here. Then my dad is still here. I have a reason to praise the Lord because of what I've seen him do. 
And as we close, as we close, we um, will be praised for it. There's no conditions for it. The Lord has done so much for us that we should all just come to the throne, come up here and just say, Lord, thank you. So throughout this week, take a moment to say, hey, Lord, thank you. Let me just praise the Lord for wherever you're at, for those trials. Because here's the thing. Our praise is an uncontainable praise. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for um, a praise to you that is uncontainable. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done for us in so many ways. We thank you for our health. We thank you for our church family that loves us, too, Lord. We pray that we will touch other people around us and so that they will ask why we are praising the Lord in the world and whatever season we're in. Lord, if anyone who doesn't know you, Lord, I pray that they will get to know you and just ask questions. Father, we thank you for everything you've done. In your name we pray. Amen.